Tonight we'll be talking about hoisting in JavaScript. Um, this file is named hoisting2 just because I've done another hoisting lecture in the past, and that's hoisting1, or I don't even think I have a numeral on it, but um, that's all that that is if you were wondering. Um, and if you have any questions tonight as we're going through this lab, or I guess it's night for me, I know I did a lecture and somebody was in another part of the world and it was the morning, so um, if you have any questions throughout this lecture, please speak up, just shout them out over your microphone or throw them into the chat. If they're in the chat, I promise to get to them. I don't always see the chat right away. I have it on my second screen, but I kind of get tunnel vision into the one that you're seeing, which is the code editor, and sometimes I forget to just glance over. So um, I might forget to get to it the second that it pops up, but I promise I will get to anything that you put in the chat uh, in time. And yeah, so let me start off by getting some feedback from you folks here and just quickly finding out how comfortable you are with hoisting in JavaScript. So uh, I actually co-host a meetup and we had uh, a guest speaker and he had been in education in the past and he did this thing which I thought was really cool to get a gauge of people. It, work, it works better in person in a room with people but I think the same concept can work here. So just throw in the chat from zero to five, zero being uh, you have never even heard of the term hoisting, and five being you think you could teach a lecture on it. Um, so from zero to five, how comfortable you are with hoisting in JavaScript. <laughs> 3 point one five. that's, I don't think I've seen that before. So that's, that's spot on, cool. Um, Joanna, I see you just jumped in. From zero to five, zero being you've never heard of hoisting and five being super comfortable with it. Uh, just throw it in the, the chat, uh, zero to five, how comfortable you are with hoisting in JavaScript. Three to four, okay, cool. So that, um, I think that's about right. I think people know that it exists and they have understand it somewhat, but they don't really get it, and they don't know how, and when it bites them, they don't think about it, and it's just like eventually it, it connects, and it's, you know, oh, it was hoisting. Yes, I get it, or I remember now that I need to look out for that. So I think a lot of the problems that hoisting could cause are mitigated by very common JavaScript um, practices and, and how we, we write JavaScript these days, so we'll see that as we go. Um, I do know there is one example that doesn't work right, and I, I figured out that it's because my version of Node just doesn't error the way that I'd like it to error. So when we get to that, I'll point it out um, for you. I can't remember exactly which one it is, but I will make sure that uh, I, I let you know where that is. So. Um, Hoisting is a JavaScript mechanism where variables and function declarations are moved to the top of their scope before code execution. Now, this means that no matter where functions and variables are declared, they're gonna get moved to the top of their scope regardless of whether their scope is global or local. And this, this idea that declarations and initializations are happening in two different places is something that common, common patterns in JavaScript and the way that JavaScript is taught mitigates, and that's because we, we don't want to have to really think about hoisting, and we'll get into that a little bit more. So hoisting only moves the declaration, and the assignments are left in place. And with that, that's where some, some issues can, can occur. So if you ever wondered why you're able to call functions before you wrote them in your code, then we're going to go through why, and that's because of hoisting. So first, let's look at a console log here. Type of, let's call it, say, variable. And we'll run this code. Oh, I missed a closing parentheses there. I was going to say, that's not supposed to have that error. OK, so we get undefined. So our first point is that in JavaScript, an undeclared variable is assigned the value undefined at execution. 
and is also of the type undefined. So if we run this code and take out this type of, we're getting a reference error here. So in JavaScript, a reference error is thrown when trying to access a previously undeclared variable. So we're seeing we have different behavior in JavaScript when handling variable variables, and that's the nuances because of hoisting. And we're going to continue to look at this a little bit more in depth. Now, oh, something, if you didn't know, as long as you have Node installed on a machine, you can run a JavaScript file by calling Node and the name of the JavaScript file. This is the folder that I'm in right now, or that this hoisting to file is in. And that's how that's working. <clears throat> now let me show this little image that I have, or that I found. Pop it over here. And this is the JavaScript lifecycle. Life cycle. And it's indicative of the sequence in which variable declaration and initialization occurs. So we see first we have declaration, then we have our initialization and assignment, then we have our usage. So we see the way that we might write some JavaScript variable var a equals 100. However, that is being broken down into a declaration, var a, and an assignment, a equals 100. And then we could do things with that variable, such as a plus 30, which would give us, which would set a to 130. However, that breaking apart of the declaration and the assignment is something that we tend to do on one line. So we don't even realize that two separate things are occurring because there is a compile that happens in JavaScript, even though it's an interpreted language, that's just all happening at once in the browser. So there are two steps to when our JavaScript code is run. It isn't just exactly as is what's going on underneath the hood of the JavaScript engine. So going back to some code, And we'll stay in the browser or the, the editor for the rest of this lecture. So because JavaScript allows us to both declare and initialize our variables simultaneously, and not all languages do allow that. Sometimes some languages you have to declare an, on one line and initialize on another line. It won't allow you to do this. This is our most used pattern. And this is going to help us keep track of where our variables are and what and what's going on. And just the reminder to remember that JavaScript is religiously declaring, then initializing all of our variables for us. It's just this is how we're writing it. So as mentioned before, all variable and function declarations are hoisted to the top of their scope. And this is also of note that variable declarations are processed before any code is executed. However, contrasting that, undeclared variables do not exist until code assigning them is executed. So because of that, assigning a value to an undeclared variable implicitly creates it as a global variable when the assignment is executed. And I know this is getting a little dense and so we're going to look at examples. So this means that, and the key is, all undeclared variables are global variables. And let's demonstrate this. And I'm going to check in with you guys and see if you're keeping up and how you're doing, but I, I think that little minute or two of speaking probably has you confused. So let's look at, at some code examples and then I'll, I'll check in and see how everybody's doing. Let's 
say function hoist and then a equals 20. Bar B equals 100. Hoist. So we call the function. And console log A. So what do you think we're going to see in our terminal? for this, the return of this console log? What do you think it's going to output to us? I've got an undefined. 20. Undefined or ref error, a 20. OK, let's see. So we get 20. And let's look at. Also, how about console log oh, B? Oh, keep missing that. Undefined. Okay. So we get 20 for the first one, and then we get a reference error, getting B is not defined. So this is one of the eccentricities of JavaScript, one of those things that can be confusing. Um, and is not B, it is confusing um, until it, it's really sunk in and understood. It is also one of the things that I think having a solid understanding of really can make people stand out in the JavaScript world because of all the type coercion and, and things that JavaScript really lets you, you know, write some code, uh, quote unquote, fast and loose compared to some other languages where that are, you know, strongly typed and such. Um, understanding what's really, you know, how these things are really working under the hood can really differentiate uh, one developer from another. So I think it's really good to to do our best to understand how these things are working. So because of how JavaScript handles variables, it's always recommended that we declare variables regardless of whether they are in a function or global scope. So this will clearly deline delineate how the interpreter should handle them at runtime. So because this variable declaration is not tied to this function scope. It is being hoisted to the global and available, whereas this is stuck inside of our function. Well, not stuck, but it's, it's scoped inside of our function. So with that, the console log A, A is available to us out here outside of the function in the global. But console log B, there is no B available to us. So something else to throw into the mix <laughs> is that ES5 and ES6 variable declarations are, well, ES6 has ES5 variable declarations, bar, but ES6 added to other variable declarations in let and const. But let's look at ES5 and how ES5 and the bar handles the, the scope. So variables declared with the keyword var are going to be scoped to their current execution context. Now, that might seem like a scary phrase or, or something that you know is difficult to, to really understand, but we'll look at it. Um, oh, I said I was going to check in. Everybody keeping up, doing well so far with the examples, anything that not making sense? Four out of six, I'll take it. I know, 
I probably can't force everybody to get a, give a response, and that's cool. Um, five out of six. Sweet. Okay. Just to clarify, if you console log hoist B, you would get 100, right? Let's do it. And I'll get rid of this one so we know that the only thing we're going to get in our console is that. I guess I could stick this to the side over here. That should be fine. Not going to be writing anything really wide tonight. And that can that'll be easier to see. So we still get B is not defined. And that's because B in the context of being passed in as an argument. So if we were to look at this, this is where that B is being looked for when we when we're console logging here. So there is no B defined in this global scope for this hoist to use here. Does that make sense? Good, cool. So now let's jump into oh, some more code. Uh, okay, so current execution context. This is going to be either the enclosing function. So right, right there, we had an enclosing function. Or for variables that declared outside of any function, global. So some other examples. Let's say console log hoist. And then bar hoist equals this will be hoisted. I guess I completely blew apart the fact that I said I wasn't going to write anything wide. That's fine. <laughs> OK, that's fine. Uh, cool. So what do we think this console log will give us? I got an undefined. I got the string. This will be hoisted. Another of the string. Another of the string. OK. Another of the string. Undefined. So this is where, when we look at things like this, we wonder, you know, why is it not this string? If this is going to get hoisted to the top of the scope, isn't this, isn't this, you know, going to end up above this? Oh, I copied uh, there. Isn't this going to end up up here and just giving the string? So this is going to bring us a little bit closer to understanding, you know, what's going on here. So JavaScript has hoisted the variable declaration. So what the interpreter is seeing is this, or something similar to this, very close to this. So the declaration is hoisted. However, the assignment is not. So this is one of the reasons that the pattern of doing this all on one line has come to be common practice. And then we look at our code as if there's something above a variable declaration in our code, we don't have access to it. We all have access to a variable, so it's not going to throw the, the reference error. However, we won't have anything there. It'll be undefined. So we, we kind of note to ourselves 
Let's do it all together on one line. And that is our visual indication of where we have access to this value. So let's look at a function scope variable. Let's say hoist again. Console log message. Our message equals hosting for life. And we'll call that. So after we're at our last example, where we were in the global scope, now we're in the function scope. What do we think we're going to see in the console here? Don't be scared to guess. We're all learning here. I guess I'm not learning it too much. I'm relearning it and cementing it in my brain. But everybody is, we're here to learn. So don't be scared to guess. Um, we've all been wrong many, many times. And trust me, until I started doing these study groups and teaching hoisting, I didn't under, really understand it. So it's not like uh, me understanding takes too long or, or really anything like that. OK. Some undefined. Some people who don't want to guess, that's fine. Um, So let's just look at this one. Or, uh, I guess my cursor's not there. Undefined. So we get undefined again. And this is following the same pattern as before. It's just scoped inside of this function. So pretty much think of the curly braces as being the scope. So what's really what the interpreter is seeing is something similar to this. I guess you throw a semicolon there. It's very similar to what we just looked at. And just, yeah, just, you know, it's, it's inside the function. That's where it, it's, it's, it's scoped. And when you get nested functions and you have functions and global variables, it does start to get complicated keeping track of things. But really, that's why we really want to organize our code in a way that makes the most sense to us. OK, so this is being hoisted to the top of the function. So. Avoiding this pitfall would be to also a pattern that is very common. Declare and initialize our variables before using them. So typically, you know, we'll see a variable in our code before we call it. And that's because of hoisting. So if we put our variable at the top of the scope already, we know we have access to it. We know that's where all the work is already happening. The interpreter's going to do it right there anyway. Now, even though it's interpreted like this, it's not going to cause us any pain or sorrow because we're still going to have access to it where we want. So something that we can do if we're writing ES5 code or don't have access to writing ES6 code, I want to safeguard ourselves some, is to enable what's called strict mode in JavaScript. Now, strict mode is something that we can opt into, so we can choose to use. 
and it's a restricted version of JavaScript. Now, there's a whole bunch of rules and things that it won't allow you to do, will allow you to do, throw errors for, that typically JavaScript won't throw errors for. Um, and you can look those up. I'm not gonna get into the details of that. However, the most prominent, I guess the largest things that, or the most general kind of things that strict mode will do for us is it eliminates some of the silent JavaScript errors and will change them to explicitly throw errors, which will be spit out by the interpreter. So sometimes our JavaScript code is erroring all over the place, but JavaScript is like, uh, it's cool. I'll just, you know, not even throw an error and let the code still run. Um, and that, to some people, is why they really don't like JavaScript. However, that's some, to some people why they really like JavaScript, because it's, it's a little bit looser in that. And strict mode doesn't allow as many of those silent errors. It also will fix mistakes that make it difficult for JavaScript engines to perform optimizations. So it'll force you to do things that are, are allowed in JavaScript in general, but some, but I guess whoever decided what strict mode is, it will, it'll tell you that you can't do that. And then it will also prohibit some syntax likely to be defined in future versions of JavaScript. So apparently they know kind of what's coming down the pipe and they're like, oh, you shouldn't use this word because it's going to be a reserved word in the future, and it's just going to cause you problems when you're trying to use Java, when you're trying to do stuff with this in the future. So it's really simple to enable strict mode. And I actually did it throughout a lot of the JavaScript curriculum when I went through it. And you just put use strict at the top of a file. You can do single or double quotes. Doesn't matter, either way. If you only want to use it with a function, you can just put it at the top of the function, like that, and only this function will be in strict mode. And let's see if I can get it to work and show an example. If not, you can read up on strict mode. Um, there's lots of info on it. You can get the really technical specifications of what it does. Uh, let's say console log hoist hoist equals hoisted. Okay. So here instead of assuming that we missed out on declaring our variable, the use strict has stopped us in our tracks and explicitly thrown a reference error. Whereas before, this would have thrown it or would have returned undefined to us. So it's gonna behave differently. And this is gonna really say, hey, hoist is not defined. This is a lot bigger error than just returning undefined to us because it's gonna say, I'm not even going to declare this variable until where it shows up in the code. One word of caution is that strict mode behaves differently in different browsers. So if you were to use it in some code that would go into production, you should do a lot of feature testing to make sure that it's working the right way. Um, it's great for enforcing some design patterns and such in code. However, relying on it in browsers is going to be iffy. So ES6 comes along, uh, officially ECMAScript 6, ECMAScript 2015, um, the latest version of the standard. Maybe it's not the latest version anymore. I know there's ES7 and ES8 things. I just think they didn't introduce as much. Um, only thing I know that's kind of been making waves is async await, which came along. But um, to ES6 was, can't, it, what did it come out? Uh, about a year and a half ago, I think, ish, at this point. But either way, there's two new variable declaration and they affect how declaration initialization in JavaScript variables happens for them. They don't change how 
I didn't change how var works. So let and let is one and const is the other. And before getting into it, variables declared with the keyword let are block scoped and not function scoped. And we'll look at this. And that's significant, but shouldn't really worry us here. It really just means that the variable scope is bound to the block in which it is declared and not the function in which it is declared. So if you had, let's say function loop, and in here you had a for loop type of thing. And my syntax is all messed up there, but uh, some pseudocode. This i is going to be in this block. It's going to be block scoped. It's not going to be available outside of this for block. So that's real quick, block scope. <laughs> so, OK. Let's start and look at the let behavior. Console log hoist let hoist equals will this be hoisted? So what do we think? Do you think we'll get undefined, a reference error, or the string? So got undefined, undefined, unless let is different than var. Var would give you undefined and undefined. Okay. or I guess as it being the string because it's let. So we get a reference error. So you all had great guesses because you're right. Var works differently. And I know there's people out there who say like, why did they completely, you know, now we have variable declarations that act two different ways. We have let and const and var and they get hoisted differently and they work differently. Like this is just getting too confusing. But we're not the people that make the decisions <laughs> about that. Um, so it's just something that we have to be aware of. So we expected it to be undefined. However, since ES6, since the ES6 let doesn't take kindly on us using undeclared variables, the interpreter explicitly spits out a reference error. So this ensures that we always declare our variables first. So something that was just a best practice in ES5 using var is now something that always has to occur. However, we still need to be careful because we can do something like this. And here we end up with our undefined where we're explicitly declaring the variable in a different place than the assignment. So like we said before, to safeguard ourselves and to err on the side of caution, we should declare and assign our variables before using them. And this pattern, you, like I've said before, you, it's probably how you were taught and how you learned and you just saw it in code all the time. But it was just like, oh, I can't use a variable for, I declare it and, ass and assign it. Like that just, it seemed like that made sense because you're going from top to bottom. Like how can I use something before it's declared? But in reality, it's due to hoisting that we, that we do things this way. 
Sounds like a const. So const allows immutable variables in ES6. And that means variables whose value cannot be modified once assigned. So with const, just as with let, the variable is hoisted to the top of the block. So let's look at an example of reassignment. 3.142. I'm going to say pi equals 22 divided by 7. Console log pi. Now, I'm not going to expect you to be able to guess this one. Um, so I'm just going to run it. But we see we get this type error assignment to a con to to constant variable. So because this variable is immutable, the value can't be modified once assigned. So now let's go back to a little bit to our hoisting and what happens with const. Console log our hoist example. Const hoist equals hoisted. So what do we think here? Got a reference error, got hoisted. So we get a reference error. So const and hoist are going to act, or sorry, const and let are going to act the same. And the same thing happens within functions. So if we were to say function circumference, if we throw in a radius for some math, console log circumference and circumference equals pi times radius times 2, um, const pi equals 22 divided by 7. Whew. Okay. Those things were easy at one point in time to remember. Circumference. Uh, get circumference. We'll say two, radius of two. Just like before, we get a reference error with circumference is not defined because it's being defined, it's being declared and initialized after it's being called. So just like with let, const goes further and throws the reference error. Now, if I had some sort of linter set up on here, and I don't, but most of most people use linters these days, it would be yelling at us right now. There would be under lines all over the place saying, you know, you can't do this. Something like pi was used before it was declared, um, or something like that. So in the global scope, console.log pi. So we've created it now. Let's say pi equals 3.14. So 
So before we got a, an error about trying to reassign. Here we get a syntax error, missing initializer in const declaration. So this is explicitly telling us that we have to not only de declare this const, but we have to initialize it with a value too. There we go. So to get into the nuts and bolts just a little bit so that you have the information, it's important to note that JavaScript does hoist variables declared with let and const. The difference is how it initializes them. So variables declared with let and const remain uninitialized at the beginning of ex execution, while variables declared with var are initialized with the value of undefined. Let's see, how are we doing? Everybody doing well? Doing good? Cool. I'm going to keep going. Might move a little bit quicker right here at the end just to get through it and allow some time for Q&A, but I think uh, hopefully you guys have been asking your questions as we go. So. If I might not leave the a full 10 minutes right here at the end for questions. So if you have any, start thinking about them, start typing them out, um, send them my way so I can make sure we have time at the end to get all the questions answered. Because I think the questions are the, one of the most important parts to get them answered, if you have any. So we'll look at hoisting functions now. Um, function hoisted. So this is a function declaration. And hoisting is going to affect both function declarations and function expressions. Now, these function declarations are following our form and are hoisted completely to the top. And this is how JavaScript allows us to invoke a function before declaring it. If you've ever seen you know, a bunch of code that uses functions and all the functions are at the bottom of the file, this is how it's happening because they're being hoisted to the top of the file um, when they're being compiled and interpreted. Now, function expressions are not hoisted. So let's say expression. Our expression equals function console log uh, double quote this won't work sad face and I'll just comment that out real quick so here we get our type error. Expression is not a function. So we see the variable declaration is hoisted, but the assignment to a function is not. So what's happening oh, is we're getting something like this. And that's what the interpreter is seeing. And that's where, why we're getting our error. So it's seeing expression as a variable and not a function when it's being called. So there isn't something to keep in mind with declaring JavaScript functions and variables, and that is the order of precedence. So variable assignment takes precedence over function declaration, and function declaration takes precedence over variable declarations. So this is going to get a little complex for a second. 
but hopefully the, the, the example clears it up. So function declarations are hoisted over variable declarations, but not over variable assignments. So what implications does this have? Let's say var double equals 22, function double, double num, return num times two, console log type of double. So this is going to demonstrate that variable assignment over function declaration. And this is the order of precedence. Now, I think when we get them all kind of, when we get them together, it'll, it'll, it'll make the most sense. So if we do show function declarations over variable declarations, now we see function. So, and even if we reversed where these are, the JavaScript interpreter would still consider double a function. So we're saying, this is kind of just one that we probably have to reference a few times variable assignment, then function declaration, then variable declaration. And that's the order of precedence. So if you have, and this is because if everything's being hoisted, what order and what, what takes, you know, what's most important, and this is what's been decided variable assignments, then function declarations, then variable declarations. Now, if one last part, which hopefully we can get through. Well, I know we can get through it. It won't take too long. And we can also hoist classes. So JavaScript classes can also be loosely split into class, tech, class declarations and class expressions. So let's say, New Hobbit photo dot height equals one hundred photo dot weight three hundred actually maybe it's like fifty and forty eight. Don't need no imperial units. Console log proto. And we have a class, Hobbit, that's constructor of height and weight. This dot height equals height. This dot weight equals weight. So much like function counterparts, JavaScript class declarations are hoisted. However, they remain uninitialized until evaluation. So this effectively is meaning that you have to declare a class before you can use it. So we get our reference error here. So instead of getting undefined, we get a reference error. And this is what's telling us that class declarations are hoisted. So as far as class declarations go, to access the class declaration, we have to declare first. And here we'll get height and weight. Now for class expressions, 
these are not hoisted, like their function counterparts. So let's say square equals new polygon square dot height equals 10. It's giving me flashbacks to a JavaScript lab on prototype inheritance, which I don't know if it's still there with polygons and stuff. Console log square. Our polygon equals class constructor height width this dot height equals height this dot width uh, equals width cool and so this will output. Polygon is not a constructor. So it's getting to here, and this isn't being hoisted. So it doesn't know if Polygon has something that it can do this with. Use the new phrase for. So with a named expression, say var polygon equals class, Polygon. We're still going to get the same error. So the correct way to do this is going to be like this, which will give us our results of height and width. So to summarize, while using ES5 and var, trying to use undeclared variables will lead to the variable being assigned to a value of undefined upon hoisting. While using ES6, let, and const, using undeclared variables will lead to a reference error because the variable remains uninitialized at executions, at execution. Therefore, we should make it a habit to declare and initialize JavaScript variables before use, as well as if we're just purely writing ES5, using strict mode or maybe just you know throwing in strict mode to test some things out and then pulling it out because uh, the browsers might act weird with it or differently with it. And that is, yeah, the, the JavaScript hoisting. <laughs> Any questions here at the end? I know I went through the last little bit a little bit quicker than the rest, so I do want to see if you guys have any questions about anything that we went through this evening. Okay, well, if there's no questions, I have one ask of you here at the end. 